Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, October 3rd, 2016. Uh, I think it's about time for another update on the cannabis sector, the marijuana stocks. I've um, been quite actively posting these as uh, mostly unofficial trade ideas, as one or two official trade ideas on the site. And um, But I know that uh, quite a few members have taken these, and in fact, uh, you know, quite a few of these names that I have here in my, my cannabis watch list, you can see here, here's a watch list of various um, uh, marijuana stocks. Um, quite a few of those have come from members, and I encourage you, if you find those, send them on. Now, for those of you not familiar with what's going on here, there's just uh, a tremendous amount of, there's a lot of momentum in the sector right now. And as I mentioned, I don't want to get into too much detail, but because I've covered this in the past, check out the old videos. These are mostly penny stocks. Meaning, you know, they're very speculative in nature. I've often, you know, once a penny stock, always a penny stock in many cases. But that's not always the case, and the gains can be explosive. These are typically, and I'm speaking in generalities here, a lot of these are, for the most part, very low priced and small market capitalization. What does that mean? That means it's at just a little bit of buying or selling can move the stock very sharply, very fast. It doesn't take much. Um, so... Uh, the momentum is there, and I, I will say this, that I've, you know, there's other tr sectors that come to mind, such as the gold mining stocks, the shipping stocks, um, which are what I call momentum sectors, and they tend to move, uh, most of the components tend to move in, in, in relative close uh, synchronicity. In other words, when the momentum's there and they're moving sharp, most of them are moving. And what I've also noticed in the past trading, uh, you know, those those various MOMO sectors, is that they when you start seeing uh, the majority of those stocks hitting you know what i refer to as my final price target or maybe a you know some all some some intermediate price targets around the same time that means they're all coming to resistance and that's often when you start seeing profit taken so they can reverse on a dime now I'm going to go through these. I'll share my thoughts. And as I mentioned recently in the trading room, um, at this point, although there's still some upside in some, and I'm, I'm still long quite a few of these, um, I'm more concerned now with with taking profits. And I have in recent, recently, last week, I took a couple off. They hit my profit target, I think two of them. Some I'm letting ride. There's different strategies. And I'll talk on that real quick. There's tremendous potential long-term. And... Um, uh, Tremendous potential in the marijuana or cannabis sector as a whole, because as we see, as time goes on, you read there seems to be this building momentum of both states in the United States as well as various countries um, that have been legalizing or at least in talks of legalizing marijuana for either medical and or recreational use. So the the, the potential marketplace is, is is enormous, and it's only going to grow from here. We see that momentum building, and I've, I've you know shared my thoughts in the trading room on that. Uh, you know, especially the next time the economy takes a downturn, I think you'll see more and more states probably, um, you know, getting on board with legalizing marijuana just just to capture that tax revenue, which they'll desperately need during the next downturn. Uh, that's just one one fundamental possibility there, but. Uh, to to make clear, uh, quite a few of these names aren't pure play cannabis. In other words, they're not uh, growing marijuana in a greenhouse somewhere or in a field to sell to uh, for recreational use or even solely for you know medical use to uh, to be consumed or smoked. There's there's quite a few uh, companies such as uh, I've mentioned this one before, Kara. Kara is not really a pure play marijuana company. It it has uh, painkillers, opiate based painkillers, uh, but they also are working on one they have in clinical trials. It's uh, cannabinoid based or cannabis based, and um, so that's why I have it in my watch list. You know that has promise. And this one is, you know, we've already pretty much, we've already hit what what is my near-term final target. I you know, mentioned booking profits there. And I did recycle back in here on this pullback to T1. And this one, you know, it's a large basing pattern. If we take a look here, I probably shouldn't jump out of order, but we'll just start with this one since I'm on it. You know, this is a large potential basing pattern, and it may take a little more time. It may need to come back in. Uh, I, could, I could see it possibly testing the top of this pattern. Um I'm still holding that position I bought back into for now, a fractional position. You know, I booked full profits on the on the hit of that first target. Uh, so the next key support would be this level, and I would expect that to hold, but that's what trading's all about. If it doesn't hold, then that would be um, not very uh, bullish for the pattern, uh, for the stock. 
And uh, on the more bullish scenario would be maybe it holds this this pullback, it kissed that T1 level, you can just make it out there. And uh, it might want to bounce around a little or it may just want to punch up through there. But this this is the primary downtrend line. You can see a few reactions already. And what you look for, this trend line hasn't been visited in a while. So what I would watch for is the next tag if and when we get up here. Even if we come in at lower levels, even if it happens to come in, this trend line can extend to the right. Um, look for a reaction on it and that would help validate it. A reaction meaning prices touch it and then either consolidate for a few days or pull back. Uh, that's a reaction. And uh, ultimately, then a break out of that downtrend line would be bullish for, for care, especially launching out of this pretty large basing pattern here. All right, so let's just jump back to these in order. Um, oh, well, no, I want to do one other thing. As I mentioned, there are, you know, these aren't just uh, companies growing marijuana in a, in a greenhouse somewhere. There, There's also some, you know, pharmaceutical uses. Um, for example, this one I'm holding in my hand, you know, they send when you buy these, some of these companies will send you their literature. Usually you get voting proxies, all that kind of mumbo jumbo, which I just discard. I'm a trader. I'm not, you know, if, if I'm an investor, I might care to care who's on the board, but, uh, usually I'm in and out of these stocks within weeks or months. So don't really care to vote. But, uh, this one CV, CV sciences, you know, I am holding a little brochure in my hand. They sent me. And it's interesting. It says the growth strategy. This, this company operates two distinct business segments, a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical division and a consumer products division, which together diversify and expand the company's growth. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's mumbo jumbo. Um, it says a comp the company's new pharmaceutical division is developing proprietary drugs that address a massive unmet medical need in treatment of smokeless tobacco addiction. Uh, so that's they, they have a, a product that is... Um, marijuana based, including a new uh, vape brand, uh, which is, you know, will help people get off of smokeless tobacco. Uh, you know, everyone knows a few years back, they came out with these, you know, those little, what, e-cigarettes or whatever. And a lot of people jumped on that to quit smoking the, uh, you know, the, the traditional cigarettes. And now you have people addicted to that because of the tobacco. So I find that interesting. So this company, and there's other things, they have a um, a chewing gum. They have, uh, let's see, uh, a couple other things. Again, you can look into it, do your due diligence, but point being that uh, there's a different uh, uh, spin on it, just like the, um, the uh, what's that other trade that we did here? The Cara, Cara Pharmaceutical, which, you know, with the painkillers I just talked about. Um, so they're not all what I call pure plays, but uh, some are indirect. All right, let's go through the charts from the top real quickly. Uh, for those of you in these, I posted an update in the trading room on this one today. CBIS, Cannabis uh, Science. Um, you know, uh, the last time I mentioned it, I pointed out how all these downtrend lines, just a beautiful chart, how well these things, you know, penny stocks are not solid fundamentals on some, maybe not so solid on others. It doesn't matter. When you see a stock that responds this well to technicals, and you can, just to the left of the chart here, I have to go back a little further, there was a downtrend line and these downtrend lines when they're taken out they're explosive it just means that a lot of traders are watching this isn't these aren't news based rips the timing of that would be almost too much you can see how well defined the downtrend lines are and then you can see when they're taken out you look down below i've already gone over this you can reference passwords you can see volume on each of these breakouts an explosion in price confirmed with high volume this is technical analysis technical analysis 101 so you follow these trend lines you watch you wait for a break this one broke back tested and jumped up it may not look like much but you know just trying to use my measuring tool that's about a you know 20 21 percent gain and most recently i mentioned it here i said we had this uptrend line as support but more importantly we're watching this downtrend line we did we broke out there i have to grab it to the right yeah, you can look at the crosshairs. Otherwise, I'll move these trend lines if I grab it there. So just just in short order, we're talking a couple days, a couple trading sessions. This one's already ripped up, you know, almost 30%. And I mentioned they, we have intersecting resistance here and a primary downtrend line that even goes to the left of the chart. So this is two years right here, and that tr downtrend line goes further. So I do expect a reaction. And, um, you know, my, my preference right now is to start take start taking some off the table there are a few of these that i'm letting a small position ride um you know there's there's an old expression there's many ways to skin a cat um, but there's also many ways to trade stocks you can just book your profits take your profits and run 
if you do believe in the longer term potential in the sector, which I certainly do, you know, number one, I said, I like to take a shotgun approach. You know, for those not familiar, a shotgun doesn't shoot a single bullet like most rifles and pistols. Shotgun shoots a, a, you know, a whole bunch of small pellets come out of a shotgun. That's why, you know, I used to call it a scatter gun back in the old days. So I take a shotgun approach to these because some of these companies may have a solid business model and may be the next big winners in the sector. Others may go by the wayside. And uh, by taking a shotgun approach, you're not only diversifying, similar to the, you're buying an ETF or a mutual fund, um, so you're mitigating your losses if any one or a couple of these go against you. And you're also then capturing some that might turn out to be the big winners. And it might not be the most bullish chart pattern. There may be some fundamentals in play that I'm not aware of. So um, that's that's one thing. Now, as they're as they're coming to resistance here, uh, ultimately, if it does break above this downtrend line, it could power right on through there and keep going. You know, the next levels. I put up a chart. I had a level right here. You have this previous reaction high, but ultimately, you can see this. See this support shelf back here, going back to 2014, early 2015. You had a reaction there. This would be my long-term target, and that's around 48, uh, 4.8 cents a share. I mentioned that, um, but again, we have to get through there. So. Back to what I was saying, you can book your full profits here. If you're happy with that 30% run, the stock may need to come back in, work its way up. Or uh, one option is to take off and you have a 30% gain. You could take your entire uh, original investment out and let the profits ride. Uh, that way you have nothing to lose. And if over time that small, it would be a relatively small position, should be very small because you should have taken a small position to begin with when trading a penny stock. But, you know, even if it's only a few hundred bucks, you know, if $300 goes up to, you know, uh, up another, you know, 160% or there are 150%. Then you've just made, you know, $450 on $350. So uh, now you have a position of, you know, $750. So it, it, it adds up. And over time, if this company, you know, and, and the sector continues to build, there's huge potential. So trade them as you want. Um, but don't ever fall in love. Remember, this is what I cannot emphasize enough. As quick as they go up, they can come down once the momentum players exit. And there will always be rips and dips, especially in these low price stocks. So you have to be fast. And very often, I like to get out ahead of time before I see the reversal come in. So uh, that that's one, CBIS. And we'll go through these quicker. Uh, SGBY. This one was mentioned by member Hollowex. Thank you. Uh, well, I never caught it. I had... Uh, told Hollowex, he pointed it out, uh, he or she, I'm sorry, I don't know uh, who Hollowex is, but is a member of the site, as far as genders, I don't know a lot of your names, unless they're pretty clear, uh, whether you're a female or male, uh, SGBY, uh, you know, Hollowex had pointed it out up here, I gave my read on the chart, I, I added all these levels at the time, I said there was this down, this uptrend line, I said this was a key target level here, that uh, two cent share, this thing had ripped up, this is what I call a momentum overshoot. Momentum means when you have very fast, powerful, it's like a rocket almost coming up, you tend to overshoot resistance levels. Uh, so, you know, if, if I were to have been in that stock at the time, I would have sold there. And if it took out 20 or 2 cents, I should say, I wouldn't have considered that a breakout or at least I would have been skeptical um, because it had come up so much to get there. And again, it was this momentum. The stock was going nearly vertical with tons of volume behind it. And uh, that that was a um, proved to be a momentum overshoot. And you can see it fell just as hard as it went up uh, leading up to that. Now it hit that, uh, I had these two support levels, pullback targets, kissed that one perfectly and then exploded back up and has stalled. You can see even back here a few days ago, it hit that two cent level. And again, it's challenging that tremendous volume. I mean, this one and uh, Hollowex made a fundamental case. If you can look at that, just use the search function on the site to find any of these stocks. Since they're not on the post by ticker, those are for front page posts, the, the, the post by ticker drop down box on the front page of the site to find things that were posted in the trading room. Any stock you're looking for, just type the ticker symbol in the uh, search function and um, that'll bring up this one. So, and you can see Hollowex is, you know, uh, you know, gives a little description about what they're doing. So this company, again, has a legitimate business model and they're not just selling pot at dispensaries. They've, they've got some other things going on there. I think believe some medical uses there. Uh, but again, you see that volume. This, this tells me this, they're, 
there probably really is something going on here, more so than just some of these others that might just be momentum plays. GRNH. Oh, and by the way, just back to that to, to finish up. You know, a solid and sustained break, the next break of that two cent level, and then especially those previous reaction highs around 30. 3.1 cents a share, uh, that that would certainly be a bullish technical event. So that's what you'd want to watch for that one. GRNH uh, pointed out this descending triangle pattern. You see by the support line here and the downtrend line, that would be a breakout there. It did break out, broke out, made a perfect back test. See how well, again, how well these are behaving to the technicals. Uh, breakout, back test, moving up. Need to take out that previous reaction high right here, which is about... Uh, 5.7 cents, and that's about what we're, we're challenging it now. We're close, and these are all the targets here on this one. So that one looks good now. It even had bullish divergence in place down at the bottom. It's not shown here. In fact, I like to put the PPO up on these stocks because there's so much, so much movement in the uh, in, on the price range. A PPO works a little better than a MACD on these uh, a lot of these small low price stocks. AMMJ, one of my favorites. I mean, just beautiful chart. This was a long-term downtrend line. Goes off, generated to the left of the chart. Again, two-year chart we're looking at. And what I liked about this one is we had intersecting resistance. Two downtrend lines right here. We had this minor downtrend line, the yellow one, and this white longer-term downtrend line. This was a breakout and a back test. Failed back under it. But that downtrend line has numerous reactions, even off to the left of the chart there, going back. Broke out right about here, took them both out. Let me try to grab it there, right about there. And this stock has already ripped up about a hundred and yeah, about a hundred and ninety percent in just a just what a couple of weeks. Uh, again, even if you took a fractional position size, one tenth of your normal position size, um, you made more money in profits, dollar profits on this thing than you would have on a on a regular trade. And so that's, you know, it's all about risk reward. And again, beautiful volume coming in this, you know, this is what you like to see. And this may hold, you know, this, 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 this breakout could continue to build. We had volume on that last breakout as well, but uh, we hit that level. Now this is a key resistance level, key target level right here, 33. I would expect a reaction there. Um, I'll be booking profits. We're almost there. And, um, you know, and I like to book my profits a little shy, so I might even take some off today. And then, if it, it ultimately, if it takes that level out, you have targets up here. And this downtrend's clearly taken out. You know, longer term, these things can. Uh, well, there it is. That's downtrend line's not drawn. It goes all the way back to right here. That was that original downtrend line. So you see a you know breakout and a back test, and there's that same level I was looking at. Um, so longer term potentials there and how you want to do it, you know, whether you want to just let the entire position ride, raise your stops, you know, there is a lot of potential or the momentum players can just step out and, the, the, and, and volume can dry up and these things can fall off. So, um, you know, they can be tough to trade, but, uh, you know, take your profits when you have them or at least ratchet up stops, protect them. They can be a little hard to exit because you need to use limit orders on most of these to buy and sell. A couple of these have so much volume lately that there is some decent liquidity. The spreads are small, one or two pennies, in which case you can use a market order, especially if you're not buying a lot. Don't put an order for thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in one of these if it especially a market order if it's um if it's especially a thin volume stock. Some again have a little little more volume than others. Uh, C-can, Canadian cannabis, very thin. You see these big choppy candlesticks. That's just thin. You really haven't seen a lot of good volume come in here lately. Even back here, we had some volume. It was pretty, but there's a downtrend line to watch. It's sort of limping through there. And again, what you're going to see, a lot of these stocks are just catching a bid because there's momentum in the sector. Uh, so the in other words, the bad are probably rising with the good in, in some cases here. MJNA, beautiful technicals. Here's a downtrend line. This one, I've been pointing these out for over a year now, I believe, you know, in and out of these. Uh, I think we caught this rip. I know I've traded this one in the past. And you can just see how well, look at the volume down below when it took out that downtrend line. And that was a gain of, you know, what was that? From bottom to top, about 68% downtrend line here's a very good support level about four cents and um, you can see a downtrend line and it was holding that support level and then exploded up so from there to there that was about another you know 47 almost 50 percent and once again i pointed out recently this downtrend line look at the breakout see the volume see the bar i mean the impulsive buying increase in volume 
confirming, moving up. In fact, it already hit that level. That was my target, that six cent level, share level. So it's already hit that once and it's tapping on this level. We've had now uh, numerous taps. You know, this was support from, from above before. We had a tag right here. You can see that tag, tag here, tag here, tag here. That's knock, knock, knock. U ultimately, it's building up energy. You have this stock basing here. And again, as long as the momentum stays in these stocks and there's, you know, there, like I said, there's some fundamental tailwinds behind the sector right now. And, uh, you know, you look for a breakout, a solid break above that level, ideally on volume. And the next targets are up here. I don't know where that line is. I'll have to, oh, I'll tell you right now. Let's just put up a level. That's seven cents about, well, seven and a half cents roughly. My, I'd say that's minor resistance. This would be a target up here, ultimately around nine cents a share. Uh, CBDS, uh, Cannabis Septiva, uh, you can see this is resistance, intersecting resistance level. So this is the target on this one right here. You see this downtrend line? Let's see, that probably goes back a little to the left. Let's go two days. Yeah, you can see it from that point right there. Go back to a daily chart. So there's a downtrend line. There's a pretty well-defined horizontal resistance zone. When I have two lines in close proximity, that's a resistance zone. So you can see the reactions up here, reaction, reaction, multiple reactions there. So you can see how the downtrend line and the resistance zone come in together. So there's your target where I'd expect a reaction. Uh, reaction could be deep. A reaction could be a pause and or consolidation before a breakout, or it could be a reaction could be a pullback. In other words, you have momentum, prices going up, and then they stop. Whether they reverse or trade sideways, that's a reaction. So you have this uptrend line to watch. You can extend that. That could be a stop if you're you're playing this one long term. Um, you know, it would be prudent to take some off the prof, uh, some profits off the table there. Uh, whether it's full, partial, you can look for, to buy it on a pullback. Or if you believe in the sector and you're not an active trader and you don't want to get shaken out of a position, then you just let it ride. Keep your stops in place. Um, or again, take partial profits and let some the remainder ride uh, for the long term. Tuck these away. You know, if you're you have nothing to lose if you're just letting your profits run at this point. There's CBDS, CGRW, uh, nice downtrend line taken out or with horizontal res horizontal resistance, and you can see pretty impulsive move above that finally. Uh, today we see some volume coming in like everything else and I don't see anything on this stock anything really to stop it there's some minor resistance right here around 8.4 uh, but ultimately you have a resistance zone up here from about 9.47 so we'll call it 95 cents up to about a dollar and a dollar is always a big level I mentioned that on ACBFF you know if it can get above a um, dollar and, and remain above a dollar that's that's quite bullish for the stock uh, there's the ACBFF. This has been by far put the most money in my pocket out of the sector. Uh, not, not, not so much. It's not my highest percentage gainer, but the way we were able to trade this, you know, two swing trades, you know, for roughly 50% gains in addition to a long-term trade. And, uh, this one is now, uh, taking out the previous reaction high. I think it's, uh, let's see. Yeah, we just did. I think we, the previous high was 112 back here. Uh, we hit that today, 112, a high of 112 or right around there. Needs to get above there, and that's bullish. And what I what I said, this is a long-term trade, and I, I said the target right now, let's just say $3 is what I put up as a rough target for the long-term trade. This is one that I, I you know, have enough that I'm going to let it just ride if uh, the stock comes back in and all of a sudden, I see things that I don't like. I'll, I'll start to stop out. I may raise stops on this one again. I believe I've already raised them once. Um, but uh, this one has a sound business model, tremendous volume coming into it. And again, I've, I've posted about the fundamental story on this one as well is the uh, technical story. And one thing I said when it was back here, when we first bought it at 55 and then again at six, 60 cents, I said it would be bullish and what I'd like to see is for the stock to get above the $1 level and remain there for at least a few days. And that's what it's done. That purple, pink, purple, whatever line is $1 level. You got above it, fell back below for a day or so, but it's it's been above that level. That helps pick it up on stock scanners and different things and could ultimately move up, uh, you know, be listed on a different exchange. 
Uh, here's full, F-U-L-L, -L, full circle capital. There's a big level to watch, 274, call it 275. If you want to be a little safe, you can see it pushing up against there. So it has some work to do, but uh, just, you know, be ready, you know, with these things. Have a price alert set. And if it takes it out, remember, a lot of these stocks don't just limp on through. They they explode. So be ready to go. Watch for volume. And most importantly, if I forget, if I haven't said this yet, create your own watch list keep an eye on the whole sector kind of get a feel a pulse on the sector because when you start seeing some uh, you know quite a few of the breakouts failing or quite a few of these stocks hitting key targets or resistance levels around the same time especially if you start seeing profit taking in those names that means the momentum has now shifted or maybe shifting and so at that point for example if everything else i just covered on this list had hit a major profit target and was starting to sell off and i saw f-u-l-l breakout i would probably pass on that breakout because the momentum players are exiting the sector that means this breakout would be more likely to fail if the majority of the other stocks are falling especially if they've already hit their profit targets c-a-r-a -A, i already talked on cara Okay, just a couple more to cover. Vape, this one was mentioned by member Retire at 60. Uh, looks good. Looks like a nice little rounding bottom here. You can see that rounding bottom pattern. Uh, I have a, res a level I'm watching here around uh, 0, 0 0.46. Uh, very low price stock. Uh, so you have to you know, buy quite a few shares to make it worthwhile. But again, keep your position size small. Spread it around. And... Um, you know, as long as the momentum is in the sector and it takes out that level, uh, I'd like to see that happen first. Uh, this one could run. I would put a, a price target right here, right about there. And that would be the 9.009 uh, uh, or 0.93 cent share level, I should say, almost a penny a share. And there's the... Uh, 1 point, uh, 1 1.1.67 cent share level right there would be the that that I won't don't want to say final target again we'll just have to watch this one see how it goes you can also put in a downtrend line here it's taken that out some decent volume but again we need to see a little more this one needs to show me a little more before I take a position there arrow was forming this bearish rising wedge but it continued to defy that uh, as a gift I was reviewing reviewing an IRA that I hardly ever do anything in a small rollover IRA account I had shares and um, I didn't have an order set at that time and I was able to get out of this one this is a target I mentioned a long time ago this uh, I've, I've covered this stock since probably back here and uh, that that was a very solid resistance level with these previous reaction highs momentum overshoot I didn't get the top I got a, got out uh, few days ago right there so this is one it i think at best it might have some longer term potential if and when it gets above that level but i think it probably needs to consolidate and uh work off these overbought conditions and um this might be a buying climax here you see the high volume but it comes at the end of an extended run so that may be a buying climax and you also have the negative divergence so that one if you're in that uh, it's still right up near those highs in fact that's probably right about where i got out you might want to at least tighten up stops if not take profits cvsi this one's broken out nice volume so far uh doesn't look like much on the scaling of this chart but you know you broke out here so far it ran up that far that's about a 20 percent run uh it's come back in a little bit because this was the first resistance level that was an intraday momentum overshoot that line there 34 cents was the uh, a very solid level you can see look to the left here Look at all these reactions. Even when you see a move below, that's just a candlestick uh, uh, shadow or a tail in that case. It means an intraday pierce there, but it closed back above it, just like that one. And all these, you can see the bodies. Look how many bodies are touching that level. It's, it's almost uncanny. And that's technical analysis. That's people watching these things. They're watching that $0.34 cent level. This was an intraday you know, whipsaw signal, failed to close, a couple more. So the next bullish uh, sign for this will be a very impulsive move up through here, a lot of volume, especially a daily close above the 34 cent level. And then that will bring it to any or, or all of these target levels that I have above. These are just 
various uh, resistance levels. And ultimately, this would be a, a, a long-term target. I think that would be a significant resistance level where it would likely have a reaction around 66 cents, uh, again, if and when it can punch up through this 34 cent level. And if the momentum remains in the sector, I can't impress that enough. Don't trade these stocks in a vacuum. Trade them along with the basket of everything else I'm looking at. Any other uh, names that you have in the sector, uh, keep an eye on. Can, this one's been a monster. Um, I'm out of this. I, I took a, a full profits. This is one of the ones I just took full profits on. Uh, that was a key level. I was watching that $2 level. It seems to be powering through there. You know, we had a momentum overshoot the day it hit it, and uh, now it's it's moving up through there, which is a good sign for the stock. You know, at some point I might re-enter, but not right now. So this one, this was a, you know, I pointed out as a long and a break above this line. And uh, this one's already gained what is that up to that level about 150 percent in just a few weeks so again you can put a you know small position size in these and it, it adds up um there's the volume monster volume you can see there confirming that breakout confirming this move um and we had big volume back there and it had a vert uh, a nearly equal rip and you can see these lines you go back again i've been covering these stocks for for over a year now at least throughout 2016 and you see an, a nearly equal run so this isn't this isn't unusual to see these huge runs. This was a 300% run on the break of this bullish falling wedge pattern, and now we have almost something similar here. And uh, you know, ultimately there might be a few stops along the way, like 273 or so. But if the momentum remains in the sector, this one looks clear all the way up to you know 409. That's still another uh, you know almost 100% gain. Yeah, another 100% from from the $2 mark. Well, of course, I didn't have to measure that out. Two to four is 100%. All right, one more. There's there's others on my list down below, but uh, these are the, just the ones that stand out to me and the ones that I'm trading. CNAB, uh, United Cannabis Corp. There's a downtrend line, another downtrend line. This this errant candlestick kind of throws a chart off and you know distorts it a little bit, but you can see here the volume, nice volume coming in since the breakout. I pointed it out before we broke out, this would be your, your long entry. We had a horizontal resistance level there, about 25 cents, and a downtrend line. I love to see intersecting resistance levels because it helps to confirm breakout, uh, makes it more powerful, more likely to stick. And so far, you know, this one's moved up uh, about 60 something percent. So as I said, don't let the chart, chart looks a little deceptive because of this long stick that just sort of skewed the the, the numbers here, but, uh, you know, 60% gain in just a few days or a week or so with the potential. I should add another line if you're in this one. Uh, see these reactions back here and here. Again, this chart's so distorted. So you can see that level I put in. Let me just give you that number. We're there right now, actually. That's probably why the stock is stalling out. It's around 44 cents a share. But ultimately, if it takes that out, we're going up here to about 75. The top line, that's a resistance. Yeah, about 75. What's the lower line at? I have two lines together. I guess they're so close. Yeah, there it is. 75 to call it almost 80 cents. That would be the target. So there's still another potential. You know, this one could still double from here. And I think it does, uh, assuming the sector holds up. So those are the ones I'm watching right now. And uh, if you guys, as I said, if you if you have any others that you follow or you come across anywhere, uh, drop me a line. If you have any notes, you can add to it. Great. If you just want to pass along a name, I'll be I'll be glad to look into it and share my opinion on the chart. All right. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.